mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god. The maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, god of the universe. Wow. Tune in or lose, friend. All strategies apply mathematically. The information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew is watching talk. Indigenous to the land, wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for God. No matter where you resign, Lodge, Temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to Blog Talk to get the information. Peace. Peace. A hard day, wash it all east. This is Brother Fahim El Bay, your host tonight, filling in for Dr. Aleem El Bay. All right, I hope everything's all right with everybody and their family. I'm getting ready to touch on dealing with the history of Moorish history, history, status, and nationality. Yes, so. Um, I hope, like I said again, I hope everything's all right. I hope everything ha- everybody had a good day today. So let me get started on this here. Yeah, I've been hearing, uh, I know there's some of you hearing that about different statuses and the like, black, you know, law, no law behind it. And you hear something about uh, the status white. Uh, all of them deal with color of law and dealing with uh, color, which in the, in the Black Law Dictionary, fourth edition revised, says that given a semblance of something other than what is real, with saying that when you call yourself black, that you're not a real person. Really, they're saying you're an artificial person. And... Uh, now you get certain moors out here on YouTube talking about the white status, which is a better status. Though we all know, I mean, some of you don't know, that they're not talking about a group of people, not a group of uh, Europeans that call, call themselves white. They're not talking about that. White is a status, meaning God, ruler of the land. And there's nothing wrong with that status, except that the status belongs to our people. You know, dealing with statuses that, uh, although I heard a brother say on YouTube that white, that black is not a people. White is a people. Well, I'm here to tell you that's that's, uh, an erroneous statement also, because white is not a people. It is a status. I saw on one program where they had this sister on this coin, and it says on uh, the top of the liberty, on the bottom it says white woman. No, brother, that's that's, that's not correct. That is incorrect. Her status is white, but she's not white. There's no such thing as a white woman in any part of the human family, such as it's the same as there's no such thing as a black woman in any part of the human family. A black man, a white man, a red man, a brown man, a yellow man, a yellow woman, brown woman, red woman, whatever. You know, there's no such people in any part of the human family. No, I don't care what status it is. There's no such people as white people. They do not exist. That is a status of a people. That's their status, and that's it. White is not a people. Okay, I hope a lot of you will get that. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with if you want to, you know, 
uh, classify yourself on the SF-181, uh, meaning uh, standard form 181, that if you want to classify yourself as that, nothing wrong with that, you know, because that's, that's a, and it's a better status. And if you want to use a status, that's the status you would want to use. Because white also stands for purity and divinity. You know, it's nothing that some European or what a lot of people say, that's something the white man wrote. No, it's not anything the white man wrote. It's not his science. That's our science. That he's using against us and for himself. Because we won't come and claim it. It's our science. It's the science that we taught them, that we gave them. I had a brother uh, said to me today, I was at the uh, Veterans Administration Hospital today for an appointment, and I ran into a brother. They were dealing with comedic science and so on and so on. They don't know that comedic, that the, comedic the term comedic is another social uh, artificial construct. But I'll get into that uh, probably in another lecture. But he was trying to tell me, he said, uh, I told him, uh, he said, are you into the comedic science? I said, yeah, I'm into comedic science. Uh, I said, yeah, that's, you know, uh, comedic science, Morris science. They all one and the same. And he said, yes, they all one and the same. He said, but y'all the one that gave the European the secrets. I said, y'all, who is this y'all? Who is this y'all, brother, you talking about? Yeah, 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 more. I said, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, brother. I said, you are more too. I said, you also are more. I said, we all are more. Then he he agreed. He said, yes, I I know that, I know that. I was okay, but don't 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 you know. Just stop saying you no. Know, get so many of us uh, supposed to be intelligent and well informed and enlightened. Sisters and brothers are always talking that mess. The Moors did this, the Moors did that. The Moors did that, the Moors did this. We are all Moors. Whether you want to be called one or not, whether you want to uh, see yourself as one or not, doesn't make no difference. And you get some Moors, as I said, another. Uh, Lecture that uh, on the uh, first World Water Block Talk Show that you know you have to join a temple to be a more. That's another erroneous statement. That's another blatant lie. You are more by birth. You are more by birth. No one can make you a more. You don't have to join. It's not like the order of the Freemasons, the Rosicrucians, uh, none of that. Secret society mess, fraternities, none of that. Uh, society, no, it is a nation. We are a nation of people. Not some you've been joined, that's some you already are. From the day you were born. Your first solar day. As some of us uh, termed it. We are all Moors by birth. And this is why you see a lot of these $5 Indians, uh, so-called white people, calling themselves Native Americans, indigenous people. That's another uh, act of theirs, of them stealing our birthright. I mean, you just see them, and a lot of you probably see them on the website and on YouTube and on television or whatever. Just looked at them. I ain't never seen no damn blonde-headed uh, indigenous woman or man. They're lying. I don't see how they even got the nerve to even show their faces and tell that damn lie that they're indigenous people. Knowing goddamn well they're not. Blonde hair, red hair, blue eyes. Who the hell I think they talking to? I mean, who who in the hell's intelligence they trying to insult? You 
This is what's going on, you know. I'm going to read something here. Uh, uh, something about dealing with tribes or nations. I don't, me myself personally, I don't like using the word tribe too much, but I use it indiscriminately, you know. I like to use the word nation, you know, um, because we are a nation of people. Uh, myself, I am a Choctaw Washita Moor. That's what I am. I have blood ties to him. I have a brother Coleman and a brother Amir. Both, we all three of us are all tied to the Washita Choctaw Nation Empire. We have bloodline to him. And you hear um, a lot of Moors. I'm not gonna mention any group or names. But if you watch YouTube enough, you, you, you'll you know who I'm talking about. And then if they're listening, they know who I'm, they know who I'm talking about them. They know who they are. I don't, know, I don't have to even say their names, you know. But uh, they're always talking about the tribal nonsense, this tribal foolishness, this tribal mess, you know. And every, one, every damn one of them belong to a tribe whether they know it or not. We've got a lot of sisters and brothers always on YouTube and Facebook and, you know, on the website, always trying to drop some science and think they really dropping some science. They ain't dropping a damn thing, but just dropping up, uh, dropping to a lot of people and telling, and telling them how much they don't know or how much they don't know what they're talking about. That's what they're telling the people. So those who hear that mess are know they don't that they don't know what they're talking about. Why? Because they have not done enough research. They have not done their homework like they claim they have. And this is where all that comes from, from a lack of homework. I'm gonna read here from call this book called We Are the Washita. The indigenous so-called black inhabitants of North America. The untold story of the ancient ones, the original black mound building inhabitants of North America. I'm using the word black and discriminating. I don't say the word. I don't say that word. I usually uh, say so-called black people because there's no such people as black people. Okay. It says here, compiled under the direction of Empress of the Washita, Viriachi Tiara, Washita, Tunica or Turner, Gustin L. Bay. It says compiled by her. She didn't actually write the book. She compiled different information about the history of the United Washita, Dido de Mondia, Moor Empire Nation. She compiled it. Different information she got together and put it all together. That's what they mean by comp- compilation. Piled, okay, by Dr. R. A. Umar Shabazz Bay. Okay, says here, preface We Are the Washita is a book written about the Washita D. Dadamandia, the indigenous empire of mound builders that has existed in North America for thousands of years. It outlines the research conducted by the Empress of the Washita entitled Return of the of the Ancient Ones. And those of you that have this book, The Return of the Ancient Ones, I suggest you get this book. It should be it, uh, it should be in every enlightened Moors library. We the Return of the Ancient Ones. Rudiachi, Tiara, Washita, Tunica, Gustin, El Bay. Remember, the return of the ancient ones. Okay? It says here, her work presents a comprehensive study of the highly sophisticated indigenous society that governed this continent long before the establishment 
establishment of the United States, Mexico, or Canada? We are the Washita answer that that most the most frequently asked questions concerning the story of the empire Washita D de la Mandia. Some of the words used in this text reveal the particular dialect and language of these ancient peoples, roots of the many advanced cultures and that flourish in the said Americas can be found in the Washita. This guy lends a simple yet thought-provoking understanding of indisputable truths regarding the correct history of civilization in the Western Hemisphere that has been systematically hidden from common knowledge. Meaning it has been suppressed. History has been suppressed and especially about ourselves, our history. So you get the you, you get the idea because a lot of us have been so socially engineered and brainwashed by the television media, uh movie theaters, uh books, magazines of what the Aboriginal indigenous people look like. They got them looking like damn their so called white people. And if you notice a lot of them have certain mongoloid features. Asian features because they are from Mongolia and Manchuria and which Manchuria is what they call China today because China is the corporation Manchuria is the country most uh, people from China don't know that they are Manchurians most of them don't know a few of them do but most of them don't they don't know that China is a corporation and Manchuria is the country. Like the United States is a corporation, America is the country. All right? We are the Washita, exposes facts that dispels some of the myths used to divide and control all the people of this land. It will motivate you to re-examine the distortions that have been standard, standardized in all in our myths, education about American, his story, and indigenous proprietors who have always occupied this continent. Once we have more a more complete understanding of the truth, we will be able to bring about justice and the Creator will bless us with the peace, harmony, and the mental liberation needed to return us to a world governed by one law, love. Like I said before, we are so used to watching cowboy and western movies and how the so-called Indian or Native American looks, you know, and you show show them one of us. You show them the uh, heads of the Omex. You know, there's clear evidence who were the Aborigines were in these Almorocks or Americas. You want to bet those who are, that can find a book on the Omex. Uh, one book I suggest you uh, get is The Mystery of the Omex by David Hatcher Childress. The Mystery of the Omex by David Hatcher Childress. Look it up. There's a vast lot of information in that book that tells you about our ancestors. That we were the first inhabitants of these Americas. Not the so-called Indian that you see on cowboy western movies all the time. Not them. The ones up there north and South Dakota where Trump and them are trying to push that pipeline through. They are not the Aborigine people of America. I'm sorry. You know. But no, again, I'm not sorry. 
I cannot be sorry for telling the truth. No, I got to take that back. But they are not they're not indigenous to this land. Thousands of years afterwards. When they came to the Bering Straits through Canada and to Alaska through Canada, they ran into us and mixed with us. All those traditions and rituals they are doing, those are ours. All those are based on our rituals, our culture. Our customs, all these war bonnets they be wearing, these uh, so-called uh, Indian clothing, Native American clothing they wear, that belongs to us. They didn't wear any of that when they're coming across the Bering Straits to Alaska. They weren't wearing that. We were. We are the original five indigenous tribes. I'm going to do some more of this on this little book here. Let's see. Who are the Washita? The question is asked. We are the Aborigines, the dark skinned, bushy haired, original inhabitants of so called North and South America. Mu. M U U. That's the word more come from, because more is a very, very, very ancient term. It didn't come from no goddamn Greeks or Romans. That's where the word more comes from. From El Moria or Lemuria. El Moor. Moor, M-U-R. That's the word of the Moor company, meaning people tied to the land. That's what a Moor is, a person, a woman, or a man, or a child that is tied to the land. Land connected people. We are Moors. And also, we are also connected to the water as well. Because you hear the word mooring, that means to navigate. Because moors, our, uh, our ancestors, were navigators. That's how Christopher Columbus got here. Because we're the only ones that could really can navigate, navigate the high seas accurately. They couldn't, speaking about Europeans. Okay, we have been referred to as the pre-Columbian civilization, the prehistoric mound builders, the Distonians, the diggers, the Asiatics, the tribes of Shabazz, the people of the wilderness, the lost tribes of the big buffalo people, and the ancient ones. Certified legal documents of colonial Spanish and French invaders, explorers, identified us as the ancient inhabitants and occupants. We are the Imperial Washita Nation of Mound Building Moors. M U U R M U U R S. Again to Moors, M O O R S of Northwest Africa, a Mexum, a Keboland. Northwest Africa. Because this is actually Northwest Africa. Believe it or not, Ripley's believe it or not. This is actually Northwest Africa. All the, the, uh, all connected together. The African continent and the American continent was one and the same, known as Pangaea, before the Great Drift. So a vast, vast, vast many of us was already here. And after the Great Drift, you had a lot of the African people, like from the Mali Empire, the Songhai Empire. And the Mor- known, actually known as, as the Moroccan Kingdom, because it became the Moroccan Kingdom. This became the Moroccan Empire. 
shipping people back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, doing trade with each other. That's what our people were doing. Don't want you to know about. They're not coming off of no goddamn slave ships from Africa. That's bullshit. A few of us did, but the majority, about 80 to 85 of, percent of us didn't. The slavery, the slave trade started here, shipping us from up and down the coast, from Canada, up and down the South Americas, the Central America. Come on, people, we got to start... Uh, Learning and studying, and learn, and then finding our set learning, and uh, 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 get to a degree of higher, to a higher learning about who we are. And when you get to that degree of higher learning of who, what you are, you won't even call yourself black. One thing you know that's an adjective, and people are not adjectives. You no, know, white is an adjective. So, brother, why do you want to call uh, 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 say that white is a people? Hmm? Although white means God ruler of the land, but white is not a people. White is an adjective. Like black, red, brown, yellow, green, those are adjectives. Those are colors. People are not colors. People are not adjectives. So you cannot apply white as an, as an identity of any people in any part of the human family. Period. Now, okay, moving along here. The Washita and the Tunica, or it says in parentheses Turner, because that's where the name Turner comes from, Tunica. Its origins go back to the term Tunica which is one of my middle names in my appellation, okay? So the Washita and the Tunica families carried the imperial bloodline. After the Americans came into our land, these names were altered. Now, what it should say is, after the Europeans came into our land, these names were altered to Washington and Turner. Because Washita was altered to Turner, and Tunica was altered. I mean, Washita was al- was altered to Washington. Let me say that again. Washita was altered to Washington, and Tunica was altered into Turner. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to dispute anybody who wrote this book, anything like that. But it should it should have said one after the Europeans came into land, the Americans was already here. We are the Americans. We are the Americans. If you an ab, if you consider yourself an Aborigine, Indigenous woman or man or child in these lands, you are the true American, Al Moroccan, Moroccan, Al Murukan, Amuru, Amuruka, Amurukan, Murukan. These are different names. Through ancient times, through ancient history, history, commonly called or known as today as America, which is a sound shift in words, which is the same thing. So they also changed the spelling of Washita to Washita. A European misnomer that retained the pronunciation of the original name. Several, several derivatives of Washita appear, such as Hichita, Washo, Wax, Chachi, Washa, Wasach, Wichita, Ushida, Uta, Itiwa, Washo, etc. The term Washita. Kolo, kolo, uh, Colloquially has come to mean ancient ones or the black ones. 
clearly printed on original maps of the Spanish land grants the river name Rio Negro or the River of the Blacks. It's a tam- it's, a, it's simultaneously labeled Rio Oshita River of the what of the of the Wichita. In the Egyptian Committee here Hieroglyphics Dictionary, Washat or Washita appears as as Oshiti or Washita Washiti. Shapti Shabazz, the pre Mayan spellings in our original uh, Mu language. Mu language, hear that? With the word Mu, where the word board comes from, as I told you before, were Ox, Xaxata, Oxaton. U A X A C T U N. Oxaton. Different uh, spelling, different pronunciations. You had one, Washatun. 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 In the ancient Orient, Shi Hua Ti. It's Chinese, pronounced she meaning energy. Wa ti or per or per trans, transpose wa shiti was the first sovereign emperor of China. Hmm? Hmm? What did he say? Yeah, it's called the Xi people. Spell X I. Capital XI, the Xi people. It came from China. If anyone you catch this uh the special on the uh, one of these uh uh YouTube videos dealing with uh them being our second cousins. The uh the martial art actor Jackie Chan on it with a fez and a sash. The next time you turn it on YouTube, check it out. And this uh, Chinese uh, scientist was saying that he found out that they are they are our second cousins. And he didn't he didn't stumble, he didn't hesitate, nothing like that. He he just said it on right on out. Okay. I mean, you can go down to the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. Down there, uh, you can find numerous of uh, Olmec heads. Numerous of them. And there's no doubt who they are once you see them. Sculptures of of our people. Many of them down there. They're going to show this on uh, uh, mainstream television. Hell no. You think they're going to put this information in our history classes in our schools across the country? Hell no. says here in the book, The Mystery of the Omex. Anthropologists generally assume that the civilization developed independ- independently in the eastern and western hemispheres. Review of the, the few features that distinguish the Omex culture of Miss America from preceding village farming groups shows, however, that many are present in the earlier Shang civilization of China. Hmm. If if Olmec civilization originated from a trans-Pacific stimulus, this has important implications both for reconstruction of new world cultural development and for formulation of a valid theory of the evolution of civilization. Because we are at the beginning of China's history. These are this is the information we have to find out for ourselves. We have to find out who we really are. So therefore, we find out who everybody else is. Okay. 
And once we find out who we are, we find out how, how they, 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 everybody else came after us. Afterwards, we were here hundred, maybe millions, a billion years, billions of years before they came. Human fossils have been found in Africa. I don't know how many billions of years. I can't uh, uh, remember how many billions of years, but there's no older, older human fossil than that one found in South Africa, not even here in the Americas. We got a lot of these brothers talking about being talking about their trans Africanists. Yeah. Really? Well what country you're from in Africa? Country and what, what tribal nation of that country of the language that you speak? Like I said before in the other blog talk shows, I'm a bit me myself, I'm a trans I'm I'm a trans uh, Trans-Americanist, or Pan-Americanist, as I should say. Afrocentric, American-centric, Amerocentric. Afrocentricity, I say Amerocentricity. Now, you know, um, you got people always bashing Moors that uh these these are not the people that bash the Moors, these are actually more nationalists. These are Moors in different groups and, and different nationality groups. And some of them some groups are pretty they, they 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 drop pretty good good science. Pretty good science. I have to give it to them. They do pretty good work. But when they start bashing the Moors that deals with tribal nation or nation tribes, this is where I draw the line. I have one more said that I said again. Uh, I don't know if I said it earlier, but I believe. But, I believe, but he, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but he's saying that this tribal nonsense, dealing with this tribal nonsense, you know, is, 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 is your your ancestors is nonsense. These are your ancestors. You talking about fool? Can't I just can't say I'm just a, can't say I'm just a Moor, or I'm a Moor. But I have no uh, national or tribal national affiliation. No such thing. There's no such damn thing as a Moor in any country or continent. Talking about he's a Moor and he don't have no tribal affiliations. That's bullshit. No, you have a tribal. Your, 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 your parents on both sides had tribal affiliations, but then you want to call yourself Aboriginal Indigenous. The Aileen was talking about in one of our law classes, talking about uh, uh, they signed the the rights of Indigenous people and uh, the human rights. Uh, they signed that in 1948. Then did it again in 2009 with Barack Obama. They had to do it again. I guess after 1948, they said, well, maybe after damn 50 years or 60, 70 years passed, I guess they said, hey, these Negroes ain't getting it yet. That they're indigenous. I said, maybe I'll do this again in 2009. Let's do it again. But I'm like Eileen, what the hell wrong with him? What the, what the hell wrong with y'all? Because I know that's what everybody else is saying. I know that's what China is saying. I know that's what India is saying. And all the other countries around the world globe are saying, especially those 144 countries that voted for the rights of indigenous people.
And for you more to talk about this tribal nonsense, the United Washington D. W. Monday of Moore Empire Nation has been recognized by 144 nations. Our United Nations number is 215-93. We recognize as a nation. We have a we, we have a flag. We have a national flag. We have the, the we have the red, black and green flag. The black represents, of course, the melanated people. The green represents the land that we live and dwell on. The red represents the blood that we shed. The yellow represents gold and wealth of our nation. Then we have the phoenix bird climbing out of the gold, out of the yellow color of fire, signifying rebirth of the United Washington D. De the Mandia Moor Nation Empire. After 500 years of being under, being under, now the phoenix bird is the symbol of climbing out of the ashes. Because Noble Drew Ali said, "In the year 2000, we will come, come, uh, uh, come upon and be in, in our own. We will be of our own." This is two. This is the year two thousand. The man hasn't been wrong yet. The tribal, this tribal, uh, what they call this tribal uh, nonsense. Okay, you cannot an uh, uh, African from any. And first of all, they don't never never really say that they're African. They always say that they're Kenyan, Gambian, Ghana, from Ghana, uh, you know, uh whatever, Ugandan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then they'll tell you what tribal nation they are part of. And the language that they speak of that tribal nation. Very rarely, if not at all. They ever tell you they are African. They'll name their nation first. They deal with nationality, nationhood, not a continent. Same thing with Australia and New Zealand. They'll never come over and tell you well, I'm Australian. No, he'll tell you he's an Aborigine of what Aborigine tribe he belongs to and the language that he speaks. Same thing in New Zealand. Same thing in here, over here. I don't have a problem with a brother telling me that he's a Lenny Lenanope Moore. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with a brother or sister telling me they're Yamasi or Yamasi. Or uh, Ekitiwa, which is uh, commonly in, uh, commonly called Cherokee, Crow, or Cheyenne Crow, Seminole, meaning the Lenape, meaning the nappy-headed ones. Who are they talking about? Talking about us. I don't know which tribe that is, the Chickasaw, or who, who is it called, the raccoon people. Where the word coon comes from as a derogatory term toward a Asiatic people. These were all tribes. Didn't know what Wally tell you in the Moorish literature, if you read the Moorish literature, if you read the, read the little book, he tells you, the eels and bays 
are tribal names. Ills, Bays, Days, Ali's, and Al's are all tribal names. So there is no question that he dealt with tribal nations and tribes as nations. There's, there's no doubt that he had done that. So what in the hell you, brother or sister, talking about tribal nonsense? What the hell are you talking about? If you have an L or a Bay, or Day or Al or Ali, if you have any of those noble tribal names, then what the fuck are you doing with them? What the fuck are you talking about? You know I'm. You know I'm talking to you. Yeah, you know, who, who are you talking about? I don't know who you talking about. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about you. Cause y'all done said it. I done heard y'all said it on YouTube. Watch it. Look right at you when you said it. Said that silly shit. If you sit to, if you listening to this blog talk show tonight, to the first world order blog talk show tonight, you know who I'm talking to, and you know who I'm talking about. Know who you are. And no guesswork. You don't have to guess. Now you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, this is Fahim El Bay. Yeah, you, you you can. My phone number is three one four six four 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 two five. Three one four six four four. Four four two five. Give me a call. Bring it on. Cause I'm sick of this shit. The hour is too late. I'm not take that back. I want to say it's too late, but it's late though. The sand is running out of the hourglass. It ain't, ain't, ain't through one of the hourglass yet, but it's almost. And we need to get ourselves together. And start studying more, start doing more research on who we are as a people, and start making these silly-ass statements and not knowing the hell what we're talking about. Now, here's this book called The Return of the Ancient Ones, The True History Uncovered of the Washita de de Mundia Empire, Empress Veriachi of the Black Washita Empire. The state of Louisiana was originally stolen and illegally sold as the Louisiana Purchase. The land is the, the stolen property of the ancient black, or so-called black, Washita Empire, the Ancient Ones. This is the Washita file. This is the book I suggest all you more should have as a part of your library. Very important book, especially those of you that are bloodline and connected to the ancient Washita Choctaw nations. Okay? If somebody would come over here and ask me if I tell them I'm a Moor, I'd say I wouldn't just say I'm a Moor. And, and definitely wouldn't say I'm a Moorish American. That's a term I don't use. I know, yes, you, you have the Moorish Science Temple of America Incorporated. I know you have the Moorish Temple of Science of the world. I know that. And I do use the term Moorish. I do use the term Moorish. I sure do. Because it also means that we are connected to being a Moor. We all are Moors, yes. Because sometimes the Moors know they're saying that you're an adjective. Moors is an adjective. An adjective does what? An adjective describes a noun. It supports a noun, but it's not the noun. <clears throat> but I do use the word Moors indiscriminately at times. Because I see 
and he had a couple walking down the street. I may say, uh, that what a what a beautiful Moorish couple. Or I may say, what a beautiful Asiatic couple. Or I may say, what a beautiful uh, Moroccan couple. Or what a beautiful Aboriginal Indigenous American couple. So on, so on, so on, so on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know? Some of us could say, oh, what a beautiful Moor couple. You say it that way, but to me, I don't know, for some reason, Moor sounds better. I don't know why. But the more correct word is Moor. Like I said, I have uh, I have a tendency to make that mistake myself. But a Moorish American, as I was told by one more one time, is nothing but an oxymoron. You know. And this is nothing, not at all, not at all. No uh, Moroccan brother in, the, in, 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 in our nation has no more respect for that man than I do. But all I'm saying is he was a flesh and blood being like the rest of us. Sometimes he may have made a mistake. We all make mistakes. There are some of you who may not like what I just said, but I'm not saying anything that's uh, derogatory toward the prophet, not at all. No, 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 no. That's something I would never do. It's just like when somebody ought to tell me ought to just say I'm a Moor and I don't belong to a to a to a uh, nation, to a tribal nation. That I won't do. That I would never do either. I I just cannot say yes. Uh, I'm just a more so to hell with so and so and so and so. To hell with my Choctaw and Washita ancestors. No, that I won't and will not do and never do. And that the rest of you shouldn't do neither. To do that would be a dishonor to your ancient foremothers and forefathers. Do not dishonor them like that. Do not do not say, you know, oh, I don't deal with that tribal bullshit. You just dishonored your ancestors. Whether you agree with me or not, whether you agree with me or not. I don't give a damn when it comes to our ancestors. I'm not dissing mine. You may diss yours like a damn fool, but I ain't dissing my ancient uh, uh, foremothers and forefathers. No, sir, indeedy. This woman, speaking of the Empress Viriachi, Justin Turner, Tunica L. Bay, speaking of her, she has strived and worked and fought hard for years, for years, for our salvation, and especially those, not only those of the ancient Washita, the Dunamundi Moor Nation, but for all tribal nations of the world. She wasn't just fighting for the Washita. She was fighting for all of us as a people and as nations. Prophet say, come back and link yourself with the family of nations. Hmm? Huh? She 
she has fought. I mean, she has went through a whole lot of trials and tribulations. She has, I mean, man. But they say she was one hell of a woman. Her, Allah, for her. For being amongst our midst. I thank her. Some of you ain't get used to that yet about Allah being a woman, have you? Well, too bad. I thank her. Thank her enough. As Minister Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam said, if I live a thousand years, I still think I, don't, I still don't think I can thank Allah for putting such a woman among my midst. Okay, it says here forward in the ancient ones. This topic is one of the three which you will be introduced to. The writer is a simple-minded person of everyday life. Outside, she is not a beautiful person. Her beauty is within. Truth in the simplest form is what we will what we what we will be conveyed here. No plot, no theme, no narrative order. You will just read simple facts with some borrowed or revised examples that have been reconstructed where the light can be seen. Our old sayings have been st- old, <clears throat> old sayings have been studied for the truth in which they may or may not told. Folklore has been looked into for tiny bits of truth that may be hidden among the old folks' lies. Old habits and signs are also undermined for some truth that may be hidden underneath. The most understanding reference is the Bible. Natural history and findings by great scholars have been turned over to scrape off the parts that have been added to make good sounding documentation. The naked truth is what you are invited to read without clothing. This issue or topic number one will be only for truth-loving people, peace-loving people who are in love with their creator and their neighbor, their families, their communities, and their countries, and neighboring countries, and all life. The truth and the light, the life. We trust that you open your mind before you read this book. Everyone will not believe me, even though it is in the plan. Hard rock truth. It is to be eaten and digested. We feel that a remnant can do justice to a great work that has already been done to our heritage without leaving us. The original people out of our history that is really ours. I first want to commend our great historians and scholars and other experts who are trying to unravel very important historical events without going to living people who know. But you cannot expect experts to know or to do everything. Consideration of feelings and time has been in main concern. Some scholars welcome truth and some do not, unless they themselves have put it in. But as an ancient one said, my people die for the lack of knowledge. I believe this, as I believe the truth shall set you free. What we need to do is to set free the mind. We cannot free a mind to seek a true knowledge by putting it under a basket, knowing it is not a lie. It is truth. Lewis and Clark said we were here when an exploration was made by them for this country. Now, those of you that know who Lewis and Clark were, they were European Freemasons. The also explorer was Jean Baptiste de Sable. Jean Baptiste de Sable was a Moor. He was not a slave. He was a Moor. He was the one that helped create it or 
uh, not help, but he was the one, what we know today as Chicago. Well, Chicago, which is an ancient uh, term, an Algonquin term or an ancient term of our people. Okay, let me move along here. The first so-called white man came to our good area and jotted down a his story document. His story document said we were here. Flino put us in his map and he said we were here and owned the place at this time. He made his map and the piano. I mean, <clears throat> sorry, and the piano said we are the people that made the road. Rio Negro Road, or what you call the river, the Black River Road, as he called it. How to cover up, we say, the so-called Black River, the Black River, which is Rio Negro, or no, that's the that's, that's the name of the river, because Black and Negro are both synonymous terms. Negro is Black for Spanish, for those who didn't know. I know that those of you that are listening tonight know this already. But I'm um, speaking for those who didn't know. Okay. If I want to know if I if a horse has teeth, I will go to a living horse and open his mouth, and that is what we have done. It took 20 years to find all of the pieces. We hope you enjoy it as much as I as I, the writer has, and it is not literature. It is truth. It is in black and white and to be read all over. Thank you. Empress Veriachi, Tierra, Washita, Turner, Gustin, L. Bay, the, the author. She's letting you know she is the author of this book, The Ancient Ones. Of course, I'm not going to read it all to you tonight. <laughs> no, I won't be able to do that, sisters and brothers. I'm going to be able to do that, family, but... I'm just going to read it in some in bits and pieces, you know. So this is a, uh, and I'm, I'm uh, I have this topic for the night is because uh, you have a lot of people still, uh, what you call, um, mm, uh, tribal board bashers. Some of them say, oh, she or he is a tribal, it's a tribal board. You know, not knowing that they are tribal boys themselves. Me, I am very proud. You know, uh, I'm, some people say you shouldn't deal with pride, and pride is stupid. And I agree. You know, uh, but I feel good about being a Choctaw, Washita boy. And it's not that I feel, and it's not only that I feel good about it. It's I have it in my heart. It's in my heart. It's in me. I breathe it and I talk it every day. I'm still learning the language of the Washita Choctaw language. There are certain uh, words as the Medunetur have been added to the language, but all of these languages of all uh, indigenous uh, nation tribes speaks the Medunetric language, if you don't know it or not. All of them, the Yamasee, the Lenni Lenanipi, uh, Nanako, Akitiwa, the Benishmael, all of them do. Cheyenne, Crow, Arapaho, Blackfeet, which is Blackfeet, I heard, is another artificial uh, social construct that has been made up, but, you know, I'm just naming them all, you know, Shoshone, Comanche, Apache, Kickapoo, Chickasaw. You know I cannot name them all. 
but every one of those nation tribes speaks the Medu Netter. Medu Netter meaning the divine words of God or divine speech. That's what Medu 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 Netter means. Let me read this uh, one page. It says, Preface by uh, Clint D. Nelson Bay. It says here, I am honored to be asked to write this preface, this preface for this book, for it speaks to a great many of my personal beliefs. This book not only greatly assists in dispelling a significant number of the well-placed and well-written lies and deceits that has been laid in our minds, layer after layer, after long and grievous centuries of time, all the while as we slipped into the land of Nod, as we ourselves started to assist in the process of helping the master physiological and master mental trickster to his heart to keep us even longer in the nod, meaning the mental sleep, the land of nod, the land of mental sleep, okay, which a great many of us still are, still are in, you know, okay. This book will awaken the sleeper and allow you to see through the, uh, through the, uh, Leg, I don't know exactly what that word is. The layers of lies that is an old saying. If you want to hide something from a so-called black man, put it between the pages of a book. If you are a so-called black person possessing any gray matter at all, and in and in, in and all of this world, you will owe it to yourselves and those behind and around you to read this book. Return of the Ancient Ones. This is one myth we collectively must shatter. The Empress Book will call to task her recessive child, the keeper of the light, and now she's one of the dominant parents in the process of awakening the nodding ones fully again. And the ones who, 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 who time has spoken of will soon approach and greet you standing on the square, properly postured and holding and giving all of the signs, symbols, and keys of his and her rightful office. And should you not believe me, just go find a truly conscious boar or boar, M-U-U-R, and ask that person. This book shows and proves with extensive documentation that the deceiving phrases have been to a large extent laid open for those who have eyes to see and have heard and, and mind to understand. For with this book, the mental tricks have been greatly nullified for those who wish to use the gifts of their minds. The Empress of the Washington D. de Bermondia has fought the good fight that even her enemies must show some grudging respect, and it has been a long, bloody, protracted fight, and with this book, she has won. It's nothing else, a very deep and satisfying victory of actually seeing and feeling it, her book finally in print. This is a book that every family who are of the human race that one of us who are people of so-called color, as opposed to those who have been, have less so-called color than we do as colorless of the boy thereof. It is not that they don't have any so-called color. It is just that they have less than we do. And it is nothing to be ashamed of. 
It is just we have more so-called color and all of the benefits that some along all of this have within the status quo. Now, I must remind you, color is a status. Now, you notice in the book it's been black, you know, uh, color, stuff like that. But me, myself, I want to say so-called color or so-called black or so-called white to let you know that these are not my words. These are the words that was written in this book by this brother, okay? Not to dispute him, you know, but those are terms I do not use myself. Not to dispute him, but not to dis and no no disrespect at all, you know. Uh, you know, just that uh, I read this book and kind of you know uh, use it in my own words, okay. And if those of you that have a problem with that, with that. Uh, I'll say again, my number is 314-644-4425. You want to say something to me about it? Okay, we'll talk about it. Okay, I'll move it along. There are quite a few of you that will continue to fight against, against the truth. That is supposed to be a both supposed to point and parcel as in one of the main tenets of the American way of life, which is, or or at the very least, was in fair play coupled with the old saying that it is not whether you win or lose, but all and how you play the game. Let's apply, let's, let's apply those same rules to the game of life, and we see who wants to then follow the above quote with the ex- explicit understanding that for all of the past, 180 to 200 years only, those who have less so-called color, then we do not, or we do or still do gain access to a vast majority of all what is what is more often than not referred to as the good life, which puts them just beyond most of the laws and the rules. The empress played by the rules, and she has been that one of those most notable exceptions and that she outplayed them at their own game, using their victory own, using their very own laws and rules. And as I said before, the Empress has won another victory in her roughly 30-year quest toward fully redeeming the last of the, her forefathers and mothers of the empire of the Washita de Dabamundia, this book, Return of the Ancient Ones, must be read by everyone, especially in the world of the academic, academic, academian, nations, for it surely that shake the foundations of those ivy covered walls, for sure. Some of it more anger and others. It would definitely more than please. The Empress has survived as the history shaken contents of this profoundly powerful book will contend to. And as far as all those details, you might just <clears throat> you, you might just weigh, well, that's another book. Well, we, well, you might just say, well, that's another book. I must say again that it is truly an honor to be asked to write these words with <clears throat> this book says, or uh, what this book says, is that if America is a land of people who live by the law and are, Govern and rule by and respect the law. Well, this book speaks uh, to just such a few, and it is an international law. This book will find you with pride and knowledge, knowledge as well as to as to tap into a well spring of anger. But let's not let's not let the anger uh, consume you. This book will enlighten you, but let not that push you into wishful thinking. But just as a suggestion that this book begins uh begins with you to start asking questions and do you uh, do you do your own personal research regarding your Moorish history and then allow your mind to connect the two. Then you say to yourself, 
Let us to journal this book. We'll take you on. We'll well be worth and the effort and the small price. Less, less but not in any means the least. It is the duty of every parent and even more so that if, if, the, if that parent is one of the human race, that they buy this book for their child and read it. Their first for themselves, and then discuss it in depth with the younger ones regarding the lies that has been that has that has to be dispelled, so that we can get a better appreciation for ourselves and of our own true history, as it has to be told, seen throughout our own eyes. As the the Empress, this extraordinary woman, woman's book, return of the ancient ones. Has 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 so beautifully done. Okay. Those of you um, uh, like I say again, those of you that don't uh, what you call believe in tribes and you no know, uh, tribal wars, as what you call them. And uh, this uh, uh, this tribal nonsense, whatever you call it, you know, uh, well, it's not nonsense. The nonsense is what you talk, what what you saying. You are the nonsense. You cannot dispel these nations. You cannot dispel the Washita Choctaw nations. You cannot dispel the Yamasee nations. You cannot dispel the Nanako nation. You cannot dispel the Lenin the Lapi nation. You cannot spell the Akitiwa nation. You cannot dispel the Benishimayam nation. You cannot spell the uh <clears throat> Cheyenne or Crow nations. You cannot expand them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You cannot expand any of them. They exist then. They are exist now. You don't have to be living on a reservation to be a Washita Choctaw or the Choc- Washita Choctaw Nation or Cheyenne Crow Nation or uh, the Yamasee Nation. Beneath my own nation, you don't have to live on a reservation. That is utter bullshit nonsense. That you so called scholars and enlightened Moors are always talking about. You don't have to be, or you don't have to join a Moorish science temple to be a Moor. That's another utter, utter bullshit nonsense. As I say it again, and I say it again, and I say it again, you are born a moor by birth. You are a moor by birth. You are a moor by birth. Not by a temple. Called birthright. It says here, this part of the book, we are the Washita. Okay. It says here, why are you called an empire? The question. The Washita Tunica Moors are a noble period of bloodlines. Moors developed one of the first known civilizations and governments. We operate according to the laws of the almighty creator of the universe. Natural law, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice are the principles that we have always inst- uh, constituted our laws. European observation 
observations of these customs on the basis of their philosophies and theories of the inherent rights in all men and of the peoples as the source of the sovereign authority. The doctrines of the American and the French Revolution can easily be traced to our ancient system of government. And that is true. All of their laws, structured even all over the world, are structured off of our ancestors. The Constitution. For a good, I can't find a greater example. The Constitution. Those are our laws that the Europeans have compiled, and what they call the Constitution, known as today as the Constitution of the United States of America. At first, you had the Articles, Articles of Confederation, our laws. Then you have the Articles of Association, Moorish law. Then you have the Bill of Rights, that's Moorish law. Then you have, now you have the what first, first you had the Constitution of the United States for America. Now it's called the United States Constitution of America, Moorish law. You hear some ignorant Negroes always talking about that's that white man stuff. That white man bought that's a damn lie. They bought it from England. That's a damn lie. England does not have a written constitution, as I, as I mentioned it before and before and before in other lectures uh, on the First World Order blog talk show. They're talking of having one, but they do not have a written constitution. England does not have a written constitution. I don't know how many times I have to repeat myself. Do not have one. I don't give a fuck what David I told you. England does not have a written constitution. Let me move along here. The Creator has placed a woman over the family, the nation, and the empire. Chitar B. de la Mandia Empire has an oral legacy over 10,000 years of rulership by the empress. The Creator anointed the woman is the lawgiver and the man is the law enforcer. Okay. The Washington Dita Lamondi Empire has an oral legacy of over 10,000 years of rulership by the empresses, by different empresses. Goes to show you that it was on the matriarchal lineage, or matri- matriarchal rulership, not patriarchal. Okay. The Creator anointed the woman as the lawgiver and the man as the law enforcer. Because that's what we are supposed to be, law enforcers. The women are the law givers. And we are supposed to enforce those laws that they give us, to our people. Eternal imperial rule complies with God's order of humankind. The Imperial Washington Nation is our sovereign governing authority. De de Mandia is our empire. Washington Moore is our divine nationality. Because that's what I am. If somebody asks me, I won't only tell them the army more in America, but I would tell them my tribal affiliation. Well, my nationality is Washita Choctaw. I'm a member of my Washingtonians. Okay? Let me say this again. Our maternal, uh, let's start from here. Our maternal imperial rule complies with God's order of mankind. The Imperial Washington Nation is our sovereign governing authority. 
The D. Dunamandia is our empire. Washita Moor is our divine nationality. There is only one race of uh, people among the Washita, the human race, like the Yamasee. The Yamasee, uh, he's a Yamasee Moor. That's their nationality. The Benishmael Moors, that's their nationality. The Kitiwa Moors, that's their nationality. We are all of different nations. I'm of the Washita Nation. They are of the Yamasee Nation. They are the Kitiwa Nation, commonly called Cherokee nowadays. The Apache Nation, the Comanche Nation, the Cheyenne Nation, Crow Nation, etc., 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 etc. These are all nations, sometimes called tribes. But they are one and the same. As I heard one sister say, stay away from those tribes. Stay away from that term. You know, how in the hell can you stay away from a tribe? How the hell can you stay stay away from a, uh, a people that you are part of? It's impossible to be anything else your ancient foremothers and forefathers was not. If they were Washita Choctaw, well, damn it, you're Washita Choctaw. Simple as that. They were Yamasee, you were Yamasee. Kitiwa, you know, you are, you are Kitiwa. Moving along here. In a chapter entitled Myths That Hide the American Indian from the book American Indian Past and Present, the scholars make a commendable attempt to describe the culture of the mound builders. According to the authors, these ancient people of the Mississippi Valley had developed advanced civilizations with well-organized aristocratic ruling classes of some of um, sons, nobles, and honored ones. In an article in Ancient America, in the Ancient American magazine, issue number 10, acknowledged the existence of this ancient empire in America and the Western academic establishment's denial of the same. The reference to this has been under, underlined and in the in this ex- excerpt from strong divisions of two large modern countries, who Don Smithano wrote. However, just east of the river near St. Louis was the large headquarters for the Mississippi civilization. So near St. Louis, this is uh, where our domicile at, in the St. Louis, Missouri Republic. Okay. We have a lot of our more uh, Moorish history here. A lot of it. And the reason why sometimes I say Moorish because we are descendants of Moors. You know, we are descendants of those Moors. So we are, Moorish also means connected, it gives you a connected are connected to our ancestors. We're still Moors. We're still Moors now. I'm still a Moor, and so are you. But sometimes you say Moorish, I mean, even when you say Moorish, it's an adjective, and it is an adjective, but that can be swung with a double-edged sword. Okay. 
Uh, it was named Cahokia. Yes, I've been to the Cahokia Mounds. I uh, struggled to the top of the Cahokia Mounds. It was one summer, me and a brother named Yada. And Yada L. Bay. He, uh, he took a picture of me climbing that, that mount. Uh, I don't know if he still had that film in his, in his cell phone or not. But I climbed that, that, that steps all the way to the top. the very top. And I say, how it tell Washita East? And along that, I say, Allah Wakbar. Allah Wakbar, meaning God is the great. God is the most great. God is the most great. And how I tell you, Washita East, may my spirit and your spirit spring forth with the jaguar. I still hope you still got that film today. Because that was, that was a very historical moment for me. Okay. The large pyramids were capped with administration buildings. It was a capital city atop the pyramids called Key, a capital lofty or highly or high up. It appears to have been well known and identified throughout the Eastern America all the way to the Atlantic coast. It was the Western Empire, which is known as Tennessee, or Tennessee, Tennessee, uh, spelled T-E-N-N-O-C-S-S-E-I, Tennessee, Tennessee, which is uh, another Algonquin term of our ancestors. And the entire territory was known by this mag- magnificent capital city. Also, uh, uh, this been this, uh, let me read this again. And the entire territory was known by this magnificent capital city atop the pyramids. Kentucky, which is in the ancient times, was was Kentucky, K A N T O K E I. Kentucky, fully translated Kentucky, would by lawfully high up and up capital city east of the river barrier. These names on early maps give testimony to the importance of these two territories to the so-called Indians stretching eastward as far as the Atlantic coast. Names well with meanings of loss to, to the western advance of European civilization, or it was it a matter of political convenience to deny such empires and political structure existed? Hmm. Being nobility as well aware of the sanctity of uh, the sanctity of the empire and quite deliberate in preserving an internal enclave for the ancient nobility of the so-called new world. The so-called new world is right because the, the world is not new. It's very ancient. These records show that we were not savages or TP dwellers, but sophisticated, industrious, and friendly. It is in coincidence that the seat of power and the spiritual vortex of the Washita remains a free and sovereign land protected by natural and international law. In the year 1805, the American ministers in the court of Spain proposed as a solution to the question of boundary disputes, declaring the Washita area neutral strip, uh, uh, neutral strip their leagues wide that would separate the U.S. lands from the Spanish territories. This zone of neutrality includes the Maison Rouge and the Bastro land grants. This area was to serve as a safe haven for recently exiled French royalists and indigenous imperial family of nations. Our neutral territory has been preserved by international treaties and conventions. 
the empire is composed of several families that grew in two tribes and nations. Eventually, the families expanded across the entire continent and continued to spread throughout the entire world. Now, I'm going to stop right here. This show, this show, and it's like what Dr. Aleem said, you don't have to be on a reservation or live on a reservation to be part of a tribal nation. Proves it right here, what I just read to you. We have spread all over the continent, all over the continent. There are so many uh, Moors uh, and uh, the white hell. The very one Moors are always talking about uh, uh, don't, don't deal with that uh, tribal mess. They probably wash it all or, or, or wash it all more of them damn selves. Yeah. They probably wash it all their damn selves. They're probably Yamasi. They're probably a Kipiwa. Lenny, Lenape. Any one of those. But if you want to, you know, you, you want to disrespect and dishonor your ancestors, fine. You know what I mean? You know. But just don't come to me with that bullshit. Because I'm going to get your ass told. And believe me, you ain't going to like what I said to you neither. So I'm going to read this over again. The, in, the empire is composed of several families that grew to tribes and nations. Eventually, the families expanded across the entire continent and continued to spread throughout the entire world, which means you get some of the people of our, of our tribal nation across, or even, even overseas that are Washita. You know? Hell, they probably some of them probably be be in Germany or somewhere. Who knows? Or Holland or somewhere in Europe. If it is found in the Washita proper demonstrates friendly and frequent relations with native peoples from all over America for thousands of years in most ancient societies with incessant stability it has been the woman who reigned over the family and the nation. In ancient Moorish times, she was called Mam, Mamor, M-A-M dash M-U-U-R-A, Mamor, ex-empress of the Moors. During more modern times, she was simply called Grandma, Queen Mother, Big Mama. In recent times, they do. I call my grandmother uh, Grandma. I have a picture of my great great grandmother in my room. Her name was E Star. E Star E A S T dash S T A R. Because the brother uh, talked to on the phone uh, about a year ago, Dr. R.A. Umar Shabazz Bay, the brother that wrote the book, We Are the Washita, he, he said, he mentioned to me that there were a bunch of E-Stars in the Louisiana Territory. A bunch of them. Now, it says here today, under the guidance of the empress and the creator of all, we are again emergence, emerging like the phoenix as a sovereign body of people, like the phoenixburg on our national flag. Like I told, told you earlier about the golden uh, the, uh, the golden phoenix climbing out of the fire of ashes, rebirth of a nation. This is what 
they're talking about here. They're emerging like uh, like the phoenix as a sovereign body of people and an indigenous state amidst the international family of nations. What does the prophet say? Come and be among the family of nations. So like I say, you know, a lot of you um, uh, talk about, you know, uh, tribes and want to bash uh, more more that could proclaim their tribal affiliation. Well, you know, you just don't know who you are. That's all. Because you did, you wouldn't make foolish, foolish uh, such foolish statements like that. If you, uh, a lot of you, some, uh, for those who call yourself black nations, there's no such nations. They don't exist. Show me, or uh, what is what is your what is your black flag? Show me. Uh, uh, speak to me in one tongue of a black language that you speak, or a black tribe, or. or a black flag. Show me one. Show me on any part, any map of a nation or country called black. Hmm? I mean, I mean, uh, I gotta say, a lot of you sisters and brothers need to do your research. All I suggest is y'all do your research, do your homework, study, study, study. You know, and as one more said, after you after, after you study well, then study yourself. Cause I'm still studying myself. You know, you have to study yourselves to get a better understanding of the world that you're in. And as some of us, I had a discussion with one brother, said, well, if y'all supposed to be such of a tribe, what treaties have y'all signed? Well, here's a treaty right here. Treaty with the Washet, or the Wishet, which is the Washita, Washita, Wichita, Oshita, Oshet, Itiwa, with Choctaw, which is all one, the Choctaw and Washita are one and the same. Okay? They're one and the same. Known by these various names, also the Comanche and 1835. Treaty with the Wichita, which is the Washita and Comanche Native American tribes and their associated bands for the purpose of establishing the perpetrating peace and friendship between the United States of America and the Washita, Itawa, or Utah and Choctaw na- Nation and the Comanche Nations and their associated bands of tr- or tribes of natives and between these nations or tribes and the Cherokee, which is the Akitiwa, and the Muscogee, Choctaw, Osage, Seneca, and Kwapa, and, 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 and Kwapa Nations or tribes of natives or president of the United States has to accomplish this describable object and to and therein appointed Governor M. Stokes, M. Arbuckle, 
Brigadier General, United States Army, and F.W. Armstrong, Acting Superintendent, Western Territory, Commissioners on the part of the United States and the said government, and the said governor, M. Stokes, and Mr. Arbuckle, Brigadier General of the United States Army, with the chiefs and representatives of the Cherokee, Muscogee, Choctaw, which is the Washita Nation, Osage, Seneca, Quapa Nations, or tribes of natives have met the chiefs, warriors, and representatives of the tribes first above named at Camp Holmes, southern border of the Great Prairie, near the Canadian River, in the Muscogee Nation, and after full deliberations, the said nations or tribes have agreed with the United States and with one another upon the following articles. This is the treaty of Camp Home Treaty of 1835. Yes, we have signed treaties, brother. We are the Washita Choctaw Nation. We are the Washita United Washita Deed of the Monday Moor Nation Empire. Yes, we have signed treaties as a nation, like with other nations. As I just mentioned. There shall be no perpetual peace and friendship between all the citizens of the United States of America and all of the individuals composing the Washita and the, Ch- the Washita Choctaw Nation and the Comanche Nations and other associated bands or tribes of Indians between the nations or tribes of the Cherokee, Muscogee, Choctaw, which is the Washita, Osage, Seneca, and Quapaw Nations are tribes of Indians. Well, it's almost time for me to get off more, so I wish I could tell you more about this. This is from the book, The First World Order. This is a book by Dr. Asu Alim Nutapak El Bay. He's still selling the book. And I would advise you to get this book also a part of your library, The First World Order book. And also I'll get the book Moors and Masonry by Brother Abdullah El Tali Mosi Bay. Moors and Masonry. These books in the ancient the return of the ancient ones are most are a must, 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 must book to be part of your library. So okay, it's about time for me to sign off. Family. And I and if I if I insulted anyone, I didn't mean to insult. I always say it, and I say it, I say it again. I, I, I just wish to educate. As I say, as I, as I say in past lectures of the Blog Talk Show, a Hawaii Washita East, Bawasama Dakunda, meaning peace family. Bawasamasu, meaning goodbye. Peace. I'm out.